Hi, my name is Kara Baltuck, and I am the basic skills and East and accelerated math teacher at East Lake East Lake Elementary School. I'm Heather Harrigan, and I'm the basic skills math and accelerated math teacher at Intervale School. And today we are coming to talk to you about strategies how to use two digit addition and two digit subtraction in primarily in second grade. As many of you know from watching the math since the beginning of the year, we are teaching things very differently than many of us have learned how to do these skills. We're using words such as regrouping, make a 10, when we were taught words such as carrying, write the one, borrowing. So we're going to show you a couple of different examples of strategies that your second graders are going to be seeing this year using two-digit addition and two-digit subtraction. So Heather's going to introduce us to one of our first strategies we're going to look at today. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to explore um, a, a two-digit two add-end in a one-digit uh, add-end and breaking it apart to make a 10 to find a sum. So for example, if I have 28 plus 6, I want to take this 28 and I want to make it a 10, a multiple of 10. So that would make it I would want to get this number to 30. A lot of times with kids who are struggling, I ask them to tap it in their head, 28, and count up to 30. So then they would say 28, 29, 30. So they know they're going to break the 6 up into 2 plus something. And then they would come up with 2 plus 4. So now I have them cross out the 2, make the 28 a 30, and then they say 30 plus 4. That makes it so much easier to add. 30 plus 4 would equal 34. And Heather, this is probably something that you do in your head as an adult all the time and don't even realize it. Absolutely. We use this method um, probably on a daily basis and don't even know that we're doing it. So now you really just know the term for it. We call this the break apart strategy. Yes. Okay, um, the next one we're going to do, um, you want to introduce it, Kara? Sure, we're going to break apart our add-ins this time as both tens and ones. So if you can look at this example, we're going to take 25 and make it 20 plus 5, and we're going to make 46 into 40 plus 6. You probably saw your students do this a lot when we talked about expanded form in our place value unit. And so okay. it's... It's a pretty straightforward way, which which uh, we'll show you right now. So 25 is broken into 20 plus 5. 46 is broken into 40 plus 6. So what we'll, we would do is we would take our two numbers that are, that are multiples of 10. So that would be 20 and 40. So then we would add those two numbers together. We would say 20 plus 40 equals 60. Then we would go to our ones. We have five ones and six ones, and we would say five plus six equals 11. Then we would write a new addition sentence, which would be 60 from up here from the 20 plus 40. We would say 60 plus 11 from five plus six, and 60 plus 11 is 71. So then we would, conclude that 25 plus 46 gives us the sum of 71. And again, this is probably something that you as an adult do in your head all the time and don't even realize it. Okay, the third strategy that we're going to uh, do is drawing a quick picture to add sums. Okay, this gives the children a sense of place value, and it also um, will give them a sense, of, will uh, heighten their number sense, breaking apart numbers into tens and ones. Okay, so if I was to take, if I said I wanted to add 46 and 19, I would show 46 as four tens and six ones. Now, a lot of times we will ask children to write quick pictures. We make a line to represent tens, and we make a circle to represent ones. 
And um, in this particular example, we're using what's called a 10 frame. Um, this is a good point of reference for the children because when they see that the 10 frame is full, they know that this number is a 10. Okay, so if we were to demonstrate 46 plus 19 using our 10 frame strategy and drawing a quick picture, we would model 46 as four tens and six ones and 19 as one 10 and nine ones. So this is going to go um, like we, um, like the first strategy kind of like breaking apart numbers, except for we're going to do it in a visual sense. We're going to take the one from, we're going to take one one from the uh, four tens and six ones, and we're going to transfer it down to this 10 frame so that we made this 10 frame full, which would make a 10. Then I have them cross the 10 frame out and and regroup this as a new 10. And once they do that, they can count up how many ones are left and how many tens there are. So there are five ones and six tens. And then we would get six tens and five ones, which would give us 65. And I just have another visual to show you. I actually drew it out how the students would draw it out as a quick picture. And I would use the same strategy. I like to group my ones as five in groups of five so it's easier. And I would just take my one and I tell the students to circle what we make the new 10. And now we know what is circled is now counted as a 10. And the same thing, we can count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 plus five and we got the same 65. So this is more what the students will draw on their own. You can see it's a quick and an easy picture for them to see as a model. And Kara, I like how you um, did two columns of five because that way it keeps the kids uh, more organized and they can see it yeah. visually. Yes, and this is also another thing. We, we encourage the students, especially as we're adding two digit numbers that should be very neat and very organized. And as we move into what we call the traditional algorithm, which is the way that we all add, a lot of times I'll tell my students to hold their paper, if you can see with the lines this way, and write one number in each line like this. So each line has its own place value, so to keep everything neat and organized so they know which is the ones and which is the tens. And this will also help in lots of other math strategies. A lot of teachers refer to this as the swimming lanes. So they might be familiar if you say, put your paper in the swimming lane orientation. It's another quick little tip that might help keep everything neat and clean. Absolutely. I use that even up in the upper grades as yes, well. Yes, and can also use graph paper. That works very nicely too. Okay, we're gonna move on to subtraction. Um, this lesson sometimes confuses children, so we thought that it would be worthwhile to take a look. So what this lesson is, it's breaking apart uh, ones to subtract. So what we want to do is go back to the base of, we want this number to be a multiple of 10. Um, so when we look at the number 42, this is going, we concentrate on the ones. We see that there are two ones. So we know if we took away these two ones, we would be at the number 40. So that's going to give us the first number of breaking apart this eight. So I would break it into two. And then you would say to the child, two plus what equals eight? And they would say two plus six. I have them cross out the two and cross out this two and rewrite it as 40. And then we have our subtraction sign minus six. Now, if most children, when they're learning how to subtract with double digit numbers, cannot do this right away. So a number line is a helpful tool uh, for them to figure out this answer. So they would start out at the number 40 and then they would count by count back by six. 
Some children can count back five to 35. Uh, if your child's not up to that, they could just take hops of one, and I have them number it. One hop back, two hops, three hops, four hops, five hops, and six hops. So 40 minus six equals 34. And that's very similar to what you saw when we showed you how to do it with addition, but it's just going backwards with subtraction. It's just breaking apart the number. Absolutely. Okay, so if we look at um, our next strategy, um, this would be using our quick picture again, okay? So in this particular one, um, if we were to subtract 27 from 43 and we wanted to find the difference, what we would do is we would model the number that is greater, which is 43. Okay, we would model it with four tens and three ones. A lot of times I'll rewrite the subtraction problem so the child can see it visually. I would write 43 minus 27. And then I tell them that the top number, the number that is greater, is the number that we model. So that would be four tens and three ones. Then we go over how we always start subtracting in the ones. And if you don't have enough ones, you need to regroup. So this gives them the visual sense that there's only three ones here and it's impossible to take away seven. So what we do is we have them circle one of the tens and you can review the concept that 10 ones equals one ten. I have them cross it out, draw a line down to the bottom of the 10 frame. And we know that 10 ones equals 110, so we're going to fill up the 10 frame with ones. So now we have a total of 13 ones. We have 10 ones here and three up here. Now we can take away our seven ones. So we cross out one, two, three, and then I have them cross out from the bottom row. Four, five, six. Seven. And there are six ones left, so I have them put a six. And then we look at our tens place, which is subtracting two more tens. So we circle two tens, put an X, and we have one ten left. And that gives us the number 16. It's a great strategy to use with young children, especially with the manipulatives, to give them the idea that you can break up a ten into ten ones. Absolutely. And it's a good visual for them to see that there aren't enough ones for them to subtract. So they need to go over to their neighbor, the tens. So hopefully these strategies will come in handy as your children navigate these units. And they, of course, will do the traditional algorithm, which is the traditional subtracting of the two-digit number from the two-digit number and adding the two-digit number and two-digit number with the regrouping. But before we get there, we like them to see all the different ways we can get there and to really see how the numbers work together and work on their number sense to see how you make a 10, understand why you can't have a 10 in the ones place, and again, in the reverse, how you need to create a 10 to subtract. Yes, hopefully you find this video helpful and thank you very much. Thank you very much and good luck with your, uh, home, with your homeschooling and teaching. Thank you.